Hello, everyone. I hope you had a great week. We are going to get started in just a moment. I just want to let you know before we begin our lesson that I have updated the mystery masterpiece in the Bitmoji classroom, and I have changed the virtual field trip to the Smithsonian Museum of Natural History. So you may want to check those out in the Bitmoji classroom. I will be changing the video this week. So there'll be a new video up for the winter months for you to view or for you a challenge for you to practice. So let's get started. We are going to be talking again about the principles of design. And I think you'll like today's project too. What do you think of these waves behind me today? Kind of beachy. Let's find out what we're going to learn about the principles of design this week. OK, you should be viewing my Google Slides and. We'll start with the kitten update as soon as my screen changes over. How about some funny faces for today? <laughs> Molly was just yawning in that picture, but she really likes those pumpkins and she likes sitting up there beside of them and she wasn't real happy when I uh, took them down ready to put some winter decorations up and I I'm sure she'll enjoy sitting beside those as well. And then there's Miss Maggie on top of the. Curtains, she was just talking. She wasn't she wasn't growling. She looks scary, but she's not. Trust me. <laughs> So there's your kitten update from with Molly and Maggie for the week. Let's get started. We're talking about the principles of design, the rules an artist uses when they are using the elements of art. Last week we talked about pattern and contrast. This week we are talking about movement and rhythm. What could those be? I bet you've heard of those words before, maybe in PE or in music. But how do we use them in art? Let's talk about movement to get started. Movement is where your eyes are guided or where your eyes move as you view an artwork and it creates the illusion of action. Now an illusion is a trick of the eye. It's like magic. So it's like you're showing through your artwork how things are moving. This is Starry Night. You've seen this before. You can view the lines here. Let me bring up my pointer. You can view the lines that you see in the sky to see the movement that Van Gogh has in this piece around the moon, around the stars, in the clouds, and you can even see those lines of movement in the landscape as well. So your eye is directed along the path of the lines. You can also have movement when you are drawing things that move. So this is called Dancing Figure Figures by Keith Haring, and you can see how he's drawing them to show that these figures are having a good time and moving around based on how their arms and legs are positioned. You can also th see these little short lines that he's drawn around the figures that also indicates that it's moving or in real life it would be moving as well. Rhythm. Rhythm is the repeating or alternating in that word alternating means changing back and forth. Maybe if you alternate chores with a brother or sister, you change back and forth so you're not doing the same thing each week. But it's an alternating of the elements in an artwork and it's usually color and line. Now that kind of sounds like pattern we talked about last week where you were repeating something like a shape. Well, pattern is more exact. Rhythm is more relaxed and can have doesn't have to be exact. When you're creating it and I will show you with these. These are some examples of op art or geometric art. And yes, we can see a pattern, the same shape that's being used for these lizards. But let's talk about the rhythm that we see here with the color. You can see how we have the brown lizards 
going in one direction. So it's also movement. Rhythm and movement are like brothers and si brothers and brother and sister. They're very closely related. And how the black lizards and then the cream colored lizards, how they're all kind of connected in the same movement or same rhythm throughout the piece. And they also, you can see the rhythm and how they're shaped and how they're interconnected. The same thing with this piece called Endless Rhythm. You can see how it moves. There, see the movement there. Uh, almost like in an infinity symbol through these shapes of these circles and the lines, but also the rhythm of it. They kind of remind me of records. And if you don't know what a record is, ask your parents. They do remind me of records that you play music on. But you can also see how the line waves or how it moves back and forth in a rhythm. Oops. One more before we talk about our artist of the week. You can also see the rhythm in the sky and in the water in this piece called the scream. You can see how the rhythm the sky moves back and forth in the uh, colors that it's uh, shown here and in, into the sky. And it also you can follow the movement of it up to the foreground where we have the screaming character. Now, let's talk about our artist of the week. Our artist is Hokusai, and this is a painting that you see here of him. We were in, we talked about a Japanese artist last week as well. This artist is from long ago. He lived in the 17 and 1800s. Hokusai was a painter and printmaker. If you're a printmaker, it usually, I think of it kind of like making a stamp. OK, only at this time, this is how they made a lot of books or made a lot of things that could be printed over and over. They would design something and then ink it and then stamp it down so that they could make many copies of the same artwork. What's interesting about Hokusai is that he did his most important, most valued work after the age of 60. So you don't have to learn or do your best things all when you're young. Some people, when they're later on in life, discover things that they are very good at. His most famous artworks are of Mount Fuji. Now, what's Mount Fuji? Let me show you. It is a volcano in Japan. That's what you see here in the pictures. You also see the cherry blossoms that are known to Japan, and you see a pagoda. We'll talk more about that style of architecture, that building. We do our architecture unit, but Mount Fuji is an active volcano and it's the highest mountain in Japan. It is also the seventh highest peak on Earth. So it's a very interesting or valued landmark in Japan, which is why he represented it so many times. Let's look at some of his work. This is called Fine Wind, Clear Morning. And if I were looking at this piece, I would see the rhythm in the clouds going behind Mount Fuji. They seem to have the same flow, the same rhythm as they flow through the sky. This work is called, uh, it's, it's Mount Fuji, but it is, it's called Tokyo Road or Tokyo Show Road. I forgot to put the name of it here in the on the screen, but let's talk about movement. Do you see how these characters or these people that are in the artwork, they're moving, they are bent over, their legs are at an angle to show that they are walking. Even the horse, we can tell he's moving as well in this picture. We can also tell from how his tail is waving in the wind there. But also I see rhythm in the shape of the trees. How, yes, they have a vertical trunk, but they all seem to have the same flow or wave in them in their design. And in the background here, you see Mount Fuji. This over here, this, this, this writing, this is the kanji. That's the Japanese uh, style of writing. So he, that's how he would, you know, sign his work and name his works. He'd use his native language. Now this. This is his most famous artwork of all, Hokusai. It's called The Great Wave. And in the background there, you can see Mount Fuji. But this is called The Great Wave because it is indeed a great wave. But we can see the lines here that show the rhythm 
and we can see the repeated pattern of the waves and how they're shaped and how the waves are drawn and painted shows that they're moving. This is not a nice, calm, flat body of water. These are waves that are crashing through the ocean. So this is our artist of the week, Hokusai, and the wave that you see here is going to be our inspiration for our artwork this week. Let me come back to my screen for a moment. Okay. So we are going to be drawing a seascape. Like you see behind me here. Meaning we're drawing water today. And we're going to try to draw some waves that show rhythm and movement. Now, just like last week, for this month, I will do a paper and art supply how-to. And then if you want to, instead of doing it on paper, you can choose to do it on Sketches School. And I will put a separate video for that. So if you want to draw on your iPad, that video will be available for you also. Okay? So if you are going to continue with this video and you want to get out your paper and some crayons, I'm using crayons today, by the way, just something to color with and your paper of some kind, we will get started making some waves. Okay, everyone. I'm just going to adjust my paper here and move my crowns over to the side. So I'm going to have my paper landscape again on my desk. Okay, and then for today, I am going to use crayon. I've already got the colors pulled. I will tell you if you want to go ahead and do this ahead of time. I went ahead and it doesn't matter if you're using crayon, color, pencil, marker, but I went and pulled several shades of blue because we're drawing water. So since water is often blue or represented in blue, I thought that would be best. You could also, if you wanted to use shades of green, I know that there's a color crown called sea foam. That makes sense too. I also pulled a gray, a white to do some blending, and some colors for the sky. I'm gonna make my, since my, I'm gonna do blue for the water, I pulled some, shades of orange and then what's left of my yellow crown because it broke <laughs> and then i've got some brown off to the side as well for something we may add at the end all right so let's get started now for today since we're drawing water we don't want to have heavy pencil lines and it's so i am not going to use a pencil to start off i'm going to go straight with my crayon and I'm going to draw in my waves. Now, I'm going to draw my waves so that they are going in this direction. So the movement is going to be going in this direction across my page. OK, so your eye will eventually end up here. As you view my waves. So to draw my waves. I'm going to take my this is Robin's egg blue. That sounds very springy, even though we are in the we're almost toward into winter. We're not there quite yet. But I'm going to take my blue and I am going to draw some waves. Now, don't worry. Like I said, I am doing this straight with a colored pencil, not colored pencil, a crayon. I will make my line a little bit darker so it shows up on screen. Don't worry if it's not perfect, even if you are doing it with crayon and you can't erase it. In fact, it's a good challenge to draw things. And not be able to erase them. It's not recommended all the time. But it's good practice so that you erase less and learn to love your work as it is. I'll go over this again so you can see my lines. OK, so as you see there, I'm, gonna, I'm showing movement. And I'm just I'm just holding my pencil. So you can see how I move my hand or move my crayon so that my waves kind of rise up in these little peaks. 
And I might add a few more. Behind there, and then I want to put in my big wave, my great wave. And if you don't want to do a great wave, you don't have to do a great wave. So I'm going to, for my great wave, I'm going to do an arched line or a curved line up, and then I'm going to go up like this. And then I might be very light in making some marks to show the foamy edge of my uh, wave. So I've got my lines in for my movement of my waves. Now I'm going to add a little bit of white or one third be like little white tips to my waves, the foamy part of the of the ocean that we see that laps up. So I'm going to go back and I'm just going to kind of mark the areas that'll be white. Let me move my paper up here a little bit. Let me go over that again. So I'm kind of drawing a, um, a smaller wave inside the wave it looks like, but it's really just a way for me to show that there's going to be a white space in here. And I'm going to do the same thing here. Make sure that I've got that pulled down. And if you mess up or you don't draw it exactly how you have, to, it's OK. Your ocean will be unique, just like mine will. And then for this wave up here, I'm going to leave that alone for right now. I'm not going to get back up there and mess with my big wave just yet. But I might show just make some more indications where my curved over part is going to be. All righty, so now we've got to start coloring in our ocean, but we're going to do it so that we have rhythm. And what I'm going to do, I want my lines to go diagonally across my waves. And I'm going to be using several shades of blue. If you only have one shade of blue, you can just apply different amounts of pressure. But I'm just going to keep the color that I've got in my hand right now. And I am going to start making waves <laughs> or adding to my waves. Rather, I've made my waves. I'm going to start adding color to my ocean. Remember, this rhythm means that we don't have to have it be exact because in the ocean wouldn't be exact anyway because it's always moving. It's always changing. Oops. So as I'm doing this, I'm not doing it to color. Let me move my paper up here. I'm not doing it to color in all the way. In fact, I'm going to be kind of quote unquote coloring in by making my lines or by making lines. It's almost like if you remember we did hatching for texture. It's kind of like that. We're not doing cross hatching. But we're coloring this in with line to show the movement and rhythm. And no, ours is not going to look exactly like Hokusai's great wave, but you know what? We're not Hokusai. We are all unique. So I'm putting in. Now the line, and then I'm going to keep the part that's white that we. The tips try to keep those white. If you don't, if you accidentally color it, yeah, it's OK. Right. I'm going to come up here. I'm going to continue. Showing the rhythm of the ocean. And then up here for my great wave that's cresting, crashing. I might draw some lines. But I'm also going to make they're going to curve in a little bit different direction because this wave is toppling or it's, it's over over all the rest of the waves in the ocean and it's going to crash down. It'd be a great wave if someone likes to surf. It could really 
have some fun with this way. Be a little bit right here at the end. Actually, on the sides rather, and then up here where it's going to be white and foamy at the end, I'm going to make it a little bit darker. Okay. Now I'm going to change my blue. I'm going to use a turquoise blue now. And I'm going to do the same thing I just did, only I'm going to try to fill in the white spots or the white places in between my blue that I just used with this blue. Now, don't worry if you have little, don't try to fill in every single white space because that's okay. You would see a, a reflection on the water anyway. They're going to be lighter areas and they can overlap a little bit there. You can overlap your colors. What I'm going to do so that my waves have more definition now that I'm adding more color, I'm going to come up here and I'm going to add some color, add this color up at the top here. I'm going to try to keep that area that's white. I'm going to leave that alone. To make my waves stand out so that you can see their movement. I'm going to darken the top there. And then I'm going to do the same thing. For the next set of waves. Right, and then for this next set, oops, I need to go back here and I need to got so into my outlining my waves. I did not add color to this set. You see how I'm kind of skipping around there? That's okay. That's what you that's what you can do too. Show the motion in rhythm. Of the water. Then we're going to come up here and I'm going to do the same thing. Now we're going to add two more. I'm going to add two more shades of blue. If you just have one shade or two shades, that's okay. If you want to go back and add more pressure with some, you can do that. Adding more pressure also can show value and show movement and rhythm. Again, I am going to, my iPad is in my view here. And I, I'm drawing this line here, so. I'm going to outline the tip of this wave too. Okay, so I'm up to my great wave. I'm going to continue to make my lines. And I'm going to be a little bit heavier in the corners and up here where I'm going to have my foamy area where my wave crest over. So I'm going to take this darker color I'm going to darken the edges of where my wave would fold over and crash. And I'm going to continue to show some definition up there. So here's where we're at. I'm going to pick a <clears throat> darker blue now. Actually, I might just do three colors here. We'll see. Um, let me pick a darker blue. It's actually called Pacific blue. That's a great blue to use for an ocean. Actually, the uh, great wave was in the Pacific Ocean. That's the ocean that borders, or that the island, the island doesn't border, the island of Japan is in, the, the um, 
Pacific Ocean. So again, I'm going to use this blue to make my wave stand out. And then I'm going to use it to add some detail to my waves. After we do this, I think we will be ready to add a few things to our background. Like I said, don't worry if you think you messed up. I bet you didn't. I bet you're the only one that notices. And yours is unique and special to you. So I'm just kind of going through now and any areas that don't have color in them or some areas where I can overlap my color. I'm adding it with the darker blue. Just to show how the waves are moving in the rhythm of the ocean. I kind of made that line a little too heavy, but that's OK. Right, I'm going to come up here. Darken these waves a little bit. Oops, I kind of went out of the lines there, but you know what? That happens sometimes. Especially when you got an iPad blocking your view. <laughs> All right. Do you know that Hokusai drew or painted 46 pictures of Mount Fuji? And that's what he became most famous for. All of his artworks that showed Mount Fuji in the background. That is something that I would really like to see someday. Maybe not Mount Fuji, but I would love to see a volcano, wouldn't you? Maybe not one that's erupting. I might like to pass on that. Maybe one that's just having a quiet day. But I would love to see a volcano. All right, so my, my great wave, I'm going to take my darker blue, go along the edge, go up here around where my foamy overlap is going to be. Continue some lines down the wave, be a little bit more defined. Up here next to the crest of my wave, and then I'm going to just continue it over to the side. And then I will come up here and darken in the top and maybe bring a little bit of that color down. I might even use the lighter color I started with to bring that down at the top. OK, and if you wanted to, if you had some parts that were maybe a little too dark or maybe you didn't like how you how you put too much color in, you can always go in with a white colored pencil or not a white colored pencil, a white crayon and blend them together. And I won't do this for my entire ocean. I'm just showing you here that if you wanted to, you could take that white, especially up here at the top where you just added that blue, and you could blend that in. OK. Alrighty. In fact, I actually wish I would have maybe added a little more, a little too harsh of a line there. Maybe I'll add a Maybe I'll take a light blue here, a lighter blue than all of them. Just so it's not such a harsh line there. OK, that's OK. We learn something different every time we try something new. And we're doing this without any pencil marks. So that is a new challenge. So if you wanted to, you could put Mount Fuji in the background. To do Mount Fuji, I'm going to draw two diagonal lines. Then I'm going to take a gray. I'm not going to close it up at the top. I'm going to take a gray 
I'm gonna put some snow on the top of Mount Fuji because I've noticed that Mount Fuji seems to have a lot of snow on it at any given time. So I'm gonna rough it in with a gray crayon and then I'll go over my gray marks once I have my lines about where I want them to be and I'm going to add a light blue. This is called sky blue to the top there. Let me all shade it in down the sides. Then I'll take my brown and I will color in my Mount Fuji or whatever you wanted to call your mountain. You don't have to use brown if you want to use green or if you wanted to put a beach in the background, you could do that too. And then to show some value, because we can still use those elements of art, even if we are talking about other things, we'll be using those for our every class this year and the years to come. We're going to just, I'm going to take a darker brown to show some value along the sides. And even down and around Mount Fuji. And if you wanted to make this stand out more, you certainly could. Okay, so I've got my Mount Fuji in the background. And it even overlaps a little bit with my great wave. Right now, the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to add, since there's so much blue here, I'm not going to make the sky blue. I'm going to take, this is called apricot, and I'm going to just shade in. Maybe this is a nice sunset in the background. And I'm going to add some color to the sky. You can add clouds. You can add, you know, you could use the clouds to show rhythm. You put the clouds in a certain direction flowing across the sky if you wanted to. I'm just going to be adding this light peach, peachy orange color. And then I'm going to go in with a macaroni and cheese. This color of this crown. I, how can you not use a color called macaroni and cheese? And I'm not going to color in the entire sky in macaroni and cheese, but I'm just going to go in and shade in maybe the areas around the wave so it stands out more and around Mount Fuji so it stands out more. And up here in the sky. And then to brighten it up a bit, I'm going to use a little bit of yellow. Just to show just maybe some light peeking. Could be sunrise, sunset, just some brighter areas in my background. Okay, so there you have it. I'm just going to take this darker blue so that stands out a little bit more. There is our my great waves. You can always go back and add some more touch ups if you'd like. It's up to you. And you could put anything you want in the background. You could put, you want to put a beach if you wanted to draw the trees like you saw in the photograph of Mount Fuji, or if you want to try to do a pagoda. That's like totally up to you. You can make this unique to you in any way you would like. It's your choice. So I thought, I hope, not I thought, I hope you had fun doing this. I look forward to seeing your great waves. I'm looking, uh, yes, I'm looking forward to seeing your great waves. Sorry, guys, lost my train of thought there for a second. Uh, have a great week. Make good choices. I will see you next time. We have a very fun artist we're going to learn about, and I can't wait to share it with you. Our next two lessons are a lot of fun.